I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. Day one. The trainees of class 99-8 have just been sworn in as civil servants here at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. You were chosen to fill these seats out of about 70,000 applicants. We have a nuclear scientist, we have a psychologist and psychotherapist, we have lawyers, we have CPAs. Um, all of that makes us strong. I can tell you this, that from the moment you came in here last night until the moment you graduate some 16 weeks from now, every hour of your time is already blocked. If you fall behind, you'll never have an opportunity to make it up. Everyone has come here with the expectation of graduating, but not all will. The first stop for the trainees, rules and procedures books, all 20 pounds of them. My name is Lisa. My degree is in industrial engineering. However, for the last four years, I've worked building pagers. I got interested about four years ago. I put in an application with FBI, and then they contacted me about a year and a quarter ago. There hasn't been a day gone by where I haven't thought about it, whether I'm driving to work, about being an agent. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is John Hall, and I am assigned to the legal instruction unit here at the Academy. It will be my great pleasure to be your primary legal instructor. More than one-third of the training will be in academics, including classes on white-collar crime, national security, behavioral science, ethics, and law. As much pleasure as we get from the investigative part of this job, folks, everything that we do is aimed ultimately at the courtroom. Chris, a law enforcement officer for seven years, worked his way through college to make himself eligible for the FBI. I guess for us law enforcement officers, it's the m most natural progression for our careers. We're not really jumping industries, if you will. Uh, but it, it's, it's another level of what I was already doing. Um, we're going to get to know you very intimately when your body fats, all right? So We're getting ready to head out for our first uh, physical fitness test. So we're all going to be nervous in one way or the other. Just relax. Your arm right there. Relax it. That's why we call My name is Monica. Before I came here, I was a high school mathematics teacher, and one day I just decided I needed to do this. If I was going to do it, I needed to do it now. I'm single, I'm 28, I don't have kids, so now was the time to do it if I was going to do it. It's been very, very busy, and we just feel like we're being pushed and pulled in all sorts of directions. Just go here, okay, we're going. Okay, just go here, okay, we're going. I'm really interested to see how I'm going to do. 195. Do what? 99. 99? That's all. Ray was an electrical engineer before being accepted to the FBI. He moved to this country at age 11 from South Korea. First week has been very emotional, I guess. Uh, my father passed away five months ago uh, with the heart fight, with the cancer. And, but his last words were that uh, he couldn't have been more proud of me for going to FBI, and I told him that uh, it would be dedicated to him. The first test for the trainees, which is given on the second day, is physical training. This will allow the instructors to see how prepared the new trainees are. The trainees must score at least the minimum points in each of the five events, or risk being removed from the class. There's always going to be somebody that comes in, generally, that is just going to be, you know, gangbusters and, and you know, doing 20 pull-ups and this kind of stuff. They can almost do one-arm giants. And then there's going to be people that can barely get their body up, and some people that can't do any pull-ups whatsoever. The last leg of the physical training test is a two-mile run. 1509, Men must do the run in under 16 minutes, 30 seconds. Women must finish the run in under 18 minutes, 45 seconds. 1701. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on
the right. Move to the right. When the trainees arrive at the academy, the instructors expect them to be in shape. But a surprising number are not. 1954. The people who didn't perform up to standards, the 15 points minimum, I can't say that, that that person was automatically going to be sent home. I can't say that. Um, there's a real possibility that they will, though. Monica and another trainee's scores are too low. Within several days, they'll be asked to leave the group. The FBI will give them one more chance. After a few months to get in shape at home, they'll be allowed to join another class at Quantico. The trainees will spend all 16 weeks at the academy. They live, eat, and sleep here for four months. We have them sequestered here, and unlike college, everyone in the class has uh, responsibilities, family responsibilities, spouses, children, uh, that obviously are weighing heavy on their mind, so they've got to manage all of that. Day three the first firearms class. The instructors like to call it a reality check. No matter how much experience you have, let us teach you what we know, no matter what Steven Seagal does on TV, okay? No matter what preconceived ideas you may have about firearms, let us teach you our methods. I want you to think for a few moments. Could you look into another person's eyes and pull a trigger and drop the hammer on that weapon? Can you then live with the thought that you took another human's life, another person's life? Something you have to think about. Very quickly, let me show you a video. And I want you to tell me whether it's fiction or reality, OK? The trainees just witnessed a shooting on videotape. It was a scene similar to this one. Now this job's not for everyone. So what I want you to do tonight is I want you to think real long and hard about what I've talked about and what you've listened to. And if you feel that this isn't the job that you signed up for, then what I'd like you to do is talk to your class counselor and your field counselors, and maybe you shouldn't come back. We have people that do that all the time. So take a real hard look at your motivations for being here. If you decide to stay, I'll see you tomorrow. Day four, it's the first day on the gun range. And despite day three's sobering reality check, all the trainees are present. We're gonna start crawling today. Next week, we'll start walking. A Couple weeks down the road, we'll start running. The trainees will receive 112 hours of firearms training and eventually fire 4,000 rounds of ammunition. I got the elbow position far. Yeah, You're not wanting to lock that one elbow out. They helped me to unlearn some of the, the bad habits I picked up as a police officer. We used to shoot in what was called a weaver stance, where the, uh, the right arm or your strong arm is out and your left arm is bent and one foot's quite far behind. Well, the stance now is much different. It's what they call a triangulated stance, with arms high, both arms out and locked. So that's a, a, a drastic change. Cover your target. It's like telling a golfer he has to learn a completely new swing. In the coming weeks, they'll be tested in firearms. Anything under 80% is a failing grade, and two failures mean dismissal. The trainees are literally shooting for their jobs. That's my first time I was shot gun. And uh, it was, I learned a lot. I knew that things were going to be tough, but uh, it is a little bit more than what I expected. 25, sir? 25, ooh, barely, but a 25, he slides it in. First time I shot it, I didn't want to shoot it again because it would just seem so deadly. All trainees are issued a Glock 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun. I enjoy shooting. I've shot for a long time. I own quite a few weapons. I knew that that part of the job would be really neat, and uh, it's something I was ready for. I was not hesitant at all in using my firearm. But agents weren't always allowed to carry guns. 
The Federal Bureau of Investigation was founded in 1908 to investigate violations of federal laws. But it wasn't until an act of Congress in 1934 that agents were finally allowed to carry firearms. In the beginning, the Bureau had few formal training classes. And it wasn't until 1928 that J. Edgar Hoover established the FBI Training Academy. Hoover's goal was the professionalization of law enforcement in this country. In those days, all the agents were men. Then, in 1972, the first woman agent was sworn in. Today, there are many in the ranks of the FBI. Position four, fire. I'm small, I'm probably one of the smallest women in the class. Fire, that second shot. My biggest fear would probably be defensive tactics. I don't want to get hurt so that I would have to get recycled, because that's what would happen. I want to be able to go through everything, and I, I know that's my weak point, but I'm going to have to work on it. If a trainee is recycled, it means he or she will have to start over again with another class. You're under arrest, FBI. Put your hands up. Higher. Higher. Turn around. Handcuffing is one of the key elements of their defensive tactics training. Bring your hands behind your It back. appears routine. Knuckle to knuckle. But bad guys know many ways to escape. And if the procedure is done incorrectly, it could cost an agent his or her life. I'm about to deprive this person of liberty. I'm about to put this person under arrest. I was very willing to always work with someone twice my size because in the real world, that's the way it's going to be. Always, always I tried to picture myself with the biggest guy you could imagine trying to see how I would handle it. Other important skills the trainees must learn are taught in the interview and interrogation class. And it's here that they first use their new laptop computers. Let's look now as investigators at this thing and say, what do we want to do? Where would we go next, thinking investigatively, work in this case? I came through the academy about 12 years ago, and they would teach you a particular competency. They might teach you how to conduct an interview, they might teach you a firearm skill, or how to do a defensive tactics move, something like that. But there was no way to integrate that into the job of being an FBI agent. They came up with this idea to start an integrated case where we would work an actual investigation from its inception to its conclusion. Everything they do, every part of this integrated case, leads on to something else. It's really a 14-week play that is scripted that they don't know the answer to. Okay, we've got an allegation of a plot to blow up a federal building in Washington, D.C. Telephonic, we want to follow up with an interview. The organization that he belongs to. Lessons learned in class are quickly applied to practical interviews. People in the nearby community are used as role players to create a more realistic environment for the trainees. I said something to Billy Ray the other day, and he says, oh, don't do that. We're really just getting to the interesting part of what he's talking the about. The interviews are videotaped. Really, what have they been doing? Field counselors, who are also special agents, watch with a critical eye. We make a living as interviewers. We make a living talking to people. If we do a good job of it, we gather information. If we don't, we lose something in the process. So my, my take and what I try to instill in these new agents when they come through is an interview is just a conversation. We want to gather information, but it has to be on human terms. Because they had a model of the Washington Monument, mm -hmm. and they blew it up. With what? Explosives. Like, that was After the interview, the instructor views the tape with the trainee. Lisa did very well, but for security reasons, critiques of most practical exercises were off limits to our camera. Armed with new facts about the integrated case, the trainees are now ready for their first practical arrest. The weapons that they're issued for this exercise are realistic, but inoperable. If you find some live ammunition, make sure you give it to one of the instructors. These arrest scenarios are about to be played out on the streets of Hogan's Alley. Like a Hollywood backlot, Hogan's Alley is meant to look and feel like a real town. Except in this town, the bank is robbed on a daily basis, and the only people checked into the motel are felons. Uh, you would probably checked in yesterday under the name of Waddle. Francis Waddle, we have a warrant for your arrest. FBI, come out with your hands up. Mr. Waddle, come up here from behind the couch. Is it on you? I, you I Adding to the students' stress, instructors will critically evaluate every move they make. Probably the most singular thing that we want to have them consider is controlling themselves. 
The adrenaline starts flowing. Uh, a lot of people suffer tunnel vision, uh, auditory exclusion. They're not listening to their surrounding. People are coming in and out. Uh, people who may or may not have a purpose or reason to be there. They need to control it. They need to affect the arrest and, and do all this safely. Look, You're under arrest. What, 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 what did I do, sir? What's his name what's again? Pictures, what's his okay? name? I think the most important part is to be as realistic as in real life for the students as that they're going to hit in the field once they get out there. They're going to have to execute a warrant, and we try to make it as realism, as real as possible. This is a respectable business. Sir, don't you take him out. Can I get my business taken? Yeah, you looking for who, sir? Darrell Wilmot, sir. Do you have a warrant for him? Yes, sir, we do. Thank you very much. What's going on, guys? Who the hell are these guys? Hi, how you doing? How you doing? Fine. Who the hell are you? All right. Darrell Wilmot? It's a learning experience. I remember whenever we're here, we're simulating real life situations, and I understand they're probably trying to simulate a late night bar atmosphere where people had a few drinks in them. And when we went to make our uh, compliant arrest uh, with that many people in the bar, a few of them got uh, agitated. Hey, hey, hey! Ow! Get what about this lady? What about this lady? I'll show you. Yeah. You got a badge? I'll show you. The information they had when they went into this arrest was this was a non-violent, non-armed and dangerous subject. They had no information saying anybody in there was going to give them a hard time. They're in a public place. They shouldn't have walked into that situation and throw, throw, throw several people around because then that leaves with a bad impression when we get out of there. Uh, they knew that when going into there, it just wasn't what they were supposed to be at, at that level at that point. Oh, yeah. Chris and his team were too aggressive in this arrest scenario. They should leave that thing, and those people should say, hey, they did a job, they were professionals. Even though they arrested my friend, they were professional about what they did. With many weeks ahead of them, the trainees still have important lessons to learn if they are to become FBI agents. Whatever driving skills the trainees thought they had are put to the severest test at the Tactical Emergency Vehicle Operations Center, or TVOC. At the right, you got the left. Okay, this is this is 45, not 48, pal. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, Ray, front and center. And come on down at 42. Keep it smooth. Go toward the green. And keep that speed up. Five, it's all 30, 30, 30, 30, 40, this is it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. This is what we call our precision backing exercise, sort of simulating an emergency situation in which you're doing a surveillance where you need to get out of there quickly. You don't have time to do a three-point turn. You don't have room, and you got to back up quickly and, and safely. We have a lot of people saying, well, I don't know if I can do that. They don't have a lot of confidence in their ability to back up in the first place. Maybe prior to coming here, the only time that they backed up was when they went to the convenience store to get a coat of milk. This day is occupied with TVOC training, but their night belongs to the practical surveillance class. Here, they'll gather information that will help them investigate the integrated case. We hire a lot of different people here in the FBI, a lot of diverse backgrounds. Sometimes we're taking people out of their comfort zone like they've never been out before, and it really makes them um, feel ill sometimes. I've seen it all. Okay, he's going in. Uh, such a bed him at the door. We've got three surveillance teams out there. Okay, check that. I got One team there. is going to watch an undercover meeting with one of our undercover agents, which is going to be me. Both subjects are at the front door. They're standing around talking. That's $700 a piece. And he wanted another meeting with me at 8.30 over at the Durango Steakhouse. Some teams have a real tough time with it, and it's a real basic surveillance. Role players act out elements of the integrated case as surveillance teams watch and take notes. Proceeding on foot. Meeting with a guy in a red cap, white male, brown hair. Red cap. Stand by. Does that look red to you? 
I'm all right, I'm driving all in front, headed out back toward the road. New agents are used very early on for surveillance. Don't do anything to attract attention to yourself on a surveillance is, is the most basic thing. I'm waiting on him, okay, and he'll go so in. just went into Dunkin' Donuts, and it looks like uh, he might be meeting somebody there. The next day, the trainees take their shotguns out to the range for the first time. Have you shot a shotgun before? Never. My family and I had been victims of violent crimes. We had farm press, uh, robberies. I had a gun pointed on my face when I was 11. I had a friend uh, getting stabbed seven times in the neck and getting killed through the violent crime. I had a friend who got dismembered on each joint of the body and thrown all over the city. So from the age of 13 years old, I promised myself that one day I'd like to be part of the elite force so I can help people. That's why the shells are getting locked in there, because you're bringing it down and forward so fast. The trainees will be taught to be proficient with a 12-gauge pump-action shotgun and an MP5 10-millimeter submachine gun. Learning to use guns is important, but knowledge of when and under what circumstances to use them is a critical component of their training. One of the most important classes deals with the Bureau's deadly force policy. The deadly force policy is not like any other law enforcement policy. When this comes into play, you don't have time to check the books. Agents are permitted to use deadly force when it's necessary. That is, when you have probable cause to believe the person poses an imminent danger of death or serious physical injury to the agents or others. The seventh week will bring with it a battery of written tests. But not all of the challenges ahead will be in the classroom. I have a hard time sleeping. I'm constantly thinking about what's coming up next. I'm not a swimmer, and there is one section where we have to jump in the water and use our, uh, use our pants as a flotation device. And I don't like the water, I don't swim, and I don't want to do it. As it turns out, Lisa is the only one in class who can't swim. Like everyone else, she's expected to jump off the three-meter platform. If she hopes to become an FBI agent, it's an obstacle she'll have to quickly overcome. The time has come for Lisa to face the challenge. She's helped on with a life jacket and prepares to climb the three-meter platform. John Loudon, the second in command at the academy, has decided to stop by and watch the class. We've had people standing there, big hulking bodies, six feet five inches tall, 300 pounds, that kind of thing, stand there, get to the edge of the board, never go off, and just break down in tears. proud of her in the way that she performed. Um, and she was a little concerned. She said, you know, I, I felt bad because I was, I was standing there and I, and I backed off the tower and what have you. I said, but the, the main thing was that you actually did it and that she should be proud of. If the trainees become FBI agents, they may encounter many uncomfortable situations. It's at these moments they'll need to reach deep within themselves and go beyond One their fears. Second burst, give the person the opportunity to close their eyes. You give the half second burst, just a quick pssst, right in the face, and then that person will affect the arrest. Oh! <laughs> Today's lesson is to understand what it feels like to be exposed to oleoresin capsicum, or OC spray. 
issued to all agents. It's a non-lethal inflammatory substance made from chili peppers. To your chest. Double up. Two or three seconds later, it just hits you all of a sudden. You're almost gasping for breath, you can barely open your eyes, and your face feels like dozens of needles just, just poking at you. Don't move. Turn your head to your right. This drill is merely to test their manual dexterity. But in the field, if a subject were to threaten an agent with mace or pepper spray, that agent could be compelled to respond with deadly force. Okay, Lisa, turn back around. Don't use your hands to open those eyes. Come on, engage. Open those eyes, Lisa. Lisa look at her. Lisa, look at her. Fight through it. Fight through it, Lisa. Get your hands up. Come on, talk, Lisa. Get your hands up. Talk, Lisa. Just keep, just feel it with your thumb and put the, put the key where your thumb is. Keep working. Look at her. Keep working. Find the hole with your thumb if you have to. Get him off, Rob. There you go. All right, man. Get her in the shower. All right. 11 weeks into the program, and the trainees have been through some of the toughest challenges of their lives. But with five weeks to go, the biggest obstacles are yet to come. All right. Early one morning of week 12, class 99-8 gets a special visitor. Since he took office in 1993, FBI Director Louis J. Free has paid special attention to all the classes going through Quantico. The run is an opportunity to relate to them on a direct basis. It's also fun. I've run with every class for six years. And as I say to them here, the skills they learn are important, but on a scale of one to 10, they're probably about a one. And the values that are critical to their success and the country's success, uh, being honest, telling the truth, promoting justice, being fair, being considerate, of all of the responsibilities and the tremendous powers that they have and using them appropriately, uh, that's the lesson that is the most important. Good job, guys. Chris? Yes, sir. Okay. Who's taking it? I think Sean again. Thanks, sir. Sure. Thanks. Before Director Free became head of the FBI, trainees at the academy received two hours of ethics instructions. Now they receive 16 hours, since ethical dilemmas are part of their everyday professional and personal lives. They have so much training here with regard to firearms and defensive tactics and physical fitness. And I can tell you that in my 12 and a half years, the only shooting incident I've had is where a bank robbery subject committed suicide. But that is once in 12 and a half years. As far as ethics, the frequency of use is every day. Every day in law enforcement, you are given ample opportunity to blow it. And how long does it take to throw away a 20-year career in law enforcement? Less than 20 seconds. Here's the problem. You can be very effective and efficient without regard to ethics. I mean, hey, you want me to get a conviction in every case? I can do it. You want me to forfeit property, houses, cars? I can do it. You know, it's easy if you have no regard for ethics or for the law. So perhaps the trainees, they have no idea of the ethical dilemmas and pitfalls that they will encounter in the field when they have a true friend, a partner, an FBI agent that you would trust with your life suddenly involved in misconduct and you are expected to report it. Uh, it's easy to say that you will in a classroom, but in the field, uh, it takes much more moral courage. You know, you use whatever uh, ploys you may think of in order to uh, you know, befriend this individual or to overstate the evidence or what have you in order to convince him to tell you the truth. And lo and behold, you get a confession. Ooh, what's wrong with this picture? That whole little Miranda thing, right? Perhaps you were We are trying to augment the classroom time with a golden thread of ethics that is supposed to run throughout all aspects of training here at the academy. Or maybe you just forgot. During their legal instruction, they are encouraged to present and discuss ethical dilemmas. In their practical applications, uh, those scenarios include intentional 
ethical dilemmas. Are you encouraged to place the cuffs on properly so that it is painless? Or it's just as easy, of course, to do it in an unethical fashion so that the individual does feel pain. Where's my slowing, man? Driver, I want you to reach down with your right hand again slowly. Fresh from lessons learned in their ethics classes, the trainees honed their practical skills by going through dozens of different arrest scenarios. Keep coming out. Keep coming out. Like an endless rehearsal, trainees will make arrest after arrest until they get it right. Down, turn away from me. When it comes right down to it, it's how you perform in these scenarios that determines how you're going to be out in the field. So they're really keeping a close eye on us, which is, which is fine. The truck. Oh, no. Special the guns truck. are used in these scenarios that fire only harmless paint pellets. But for added safety, the trainees and the role players they arrest wear protective goggles. We try to give them a scenario that's realistic as possible. The things we try to reinforce in all our scenarios are the three C's, controlling yourself, controlling the subject, and controlling an environment. I think if all the new agent trainees manage to do that, they'll have a successful arrest. Put your hands up. All the way, higher. Our parts were pumping 150 miles an hour. If we don't feel nervous or somewhat pumped up, then something's wrong. I said, turn around. Don't look. Hey, we can run. Turn around. Bang, 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 bang. All right. Hold red. He's down. The subject decided to fight me, and he went for his gun. And from my perspective, we weren't scared. We were so focused. We had to get these, these people because fear defeats us. We can't let the fear defeat us because there's no reason to come out here in the first place. The next practical will tie into their integrated case scenario. The trainees have only been told that members of the American Revolutionary Movement are about to pick up some ransom money. Go, 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 go. The trunk of the car was unexpectedly booby-trapped with dynamite. The trainees were warned that the bad guys were known to use explosives. They should have contacted an agency that specializes in bomb detection. In real life, there would have been casualties. Just because a new agent trainee gets shot here during one of the practical exercises doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Here, it's a learning tool. When they do something silly, they'll remember it. It will be embedded in their memory for their entire career. By this point, many of the trainees haven't seen their families in 14 weeks. I call my mother every night uh, and talk to her and share what I went through uh, for the day. And I look at his, my father's picture every night and talk to him, my father. Uh, I hope you're proud of me, and I truly believe that he is. But with only two weeks left to go, the biggest test is yet to come. Week 14, and the Bank of Hogan has just been robbed. This is the grand finale of the integrated case. We just had a robbery over here, okay? I, Get over here quickly, will you please? An instructor watches as the trainees begin the investigation. Yeah. Yes, the crime scene is secured and the interviewing process begun. Did you notice anybody that you haven't seen around here that you just... No, just every train. 
this federally insured is required to have a certain amount of security equipment. Right. Now it's up to the trainees to catch the bank robbers and present the evidence at moot court later in the week. Based on information Ray gathered from an eyewitness, Chris and his team are sent to arrest one of the bank robbery suspects. FBI! The trainees are thrown a curveball. The suspect's apartment is empty, but his car is seen approaching the area. Sir, take the keys out of the ignition with your right hand. I got the trailer, Steve. Hey, sir, listen up. I want you to turn away from my voice. I want you to walk to your rear, slowly. Meanwhile, Lisa's team is simultaneously on the trail of another bank robbery suspect. Maybe they'll break cover and walk in front of that uh, door. Get your hands up! Yeah, get your hands up! Get your hands up! They did a very good job of staying down behind their vehicles, covering the front door, and that's what I'm looking for. Good basics. This is the tip of the iceberg for them. And they're only gonna go from here now and really start learning what it's all about out there. The suspects are apprehended and the evidence is collected. But the 14 week long integrated case scenario only comes to a final conclusion when all the material is presented in a moot court. And I'm handing you government exhibits 4 and 4A mm -hmm. that I've marked. A you. retired special agent and an assistant U.S. attorney play the roles of prosecuting and defending attorneys to add realism to the courtroom proceedings. That depicts number two uh, in the evidence recovery log, sir. And did you take those pictures? Yes, sir. For did. most of these trainees, it's the first time they've ever been on a witness stand testifying, and certainly the first time they have been subjected to cross examination by a defense attorney whose sole purpose is to make them look incompetent, dishonest, or a combination of the two. It was in that hotel room? Yes, ma'am. And so what kind of gun is this? I believe know? that's a uh, Colt 45. Okay, now the other gun is the gun that you forgot, is that correct? Yes. Okay. The trainees have spent 14 weeks on the integrated case, which is now brought to a close. But two big tests are still to come. All the trainees must still pass their final firearms and physical training test. They could come this far and, and possibly not graduate, so we're looking at something that could be their career on the line. Chris, Lisa, and Ray pass. Two other trainees fail the physical training final, triggering a complete review of their performance. They'll be given another chance in a few weeks, but they won't be permitted to graduate with their fellow classmates. There is a degree of excitement about being an FBI agent. It can be fun, it can be stressful. Some people may not have a, have a job at the end of this, may not make it. Desire alone is insufficient. You can say all day long that you want to be and you want to be, but you have to be able to produce, you have to be able to perform, you have to have that commitment. It takes more than mere desire to become an FBI agent. With graduation only a few days away, the defensive tactics and firearms finals claim two more trainees. Of the 40 people who started, only 32 will graduate with this class. Against all enemies. Finally, graduation. That I will bear the trainees are sworn in as FBI special agents. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. 
As he's done since he took office, Director Free presents each new agent with credentials. And a photo is taken. I learned about myself a lot. And maybe that's the worst part, learning some things about myself that I need to rectify, make better, correct. It's not just sitting behind a desk, or it's not just running around all the time. It's whatever you make of it. So I'm willing to make this job everything it needs to be for me to make me happy. Ah, it feels good to be done. You know, you get to reach in your pocket here and pull something out that means a lot, right? And you get to pull out your credentials. This is it, right? FBI. Within a few weeks, these new special agents will have to move themselves and their families to their assigned cities. This is something that I've always wanted for so long. It just doesn't seem real. I feel like uh, maybe I'm dreaming. Just being in FBI means so much to me. You better come to me. Yeah, this is my father, and this is my wife, uh, my brothers. My little niece, June, my aunt, uh, and my cousin, and my uncle. I dedicate all this training to my father. Wow. When the training is over, one of the first things that I'll be doing is drive down to my father's grave and uh, putting my, my badge on top of him so that he can see uh, one of his sons has become FBI Special Agent. You know, we've trained them down here for a long time and we've taught them hopefully a lot of skills and things. But the most important things that they have in terms of their ability to do this job are the things that they learned from their parents when they were three, four years old. And those are the values of telling the truth, being fair, not hurting other people. That's the key to their success. It's the key to the FBI's success and really the country's future. And uh, we're very proud of them, very confident in them. That's the uh, the marching orders they have, and uh, we think they'll do very well for the country. Thirty-two of the FBI's most recent agents are about to embark on their newest journey.